Let's take it away. All right, I'll get started. So um, thank you everyone for joining us for uh, Governance is Code Day with Cloud Custodian. Um, I really appreciate the last two speakers for their FinOps related presentations. That leads directly into what I'm gonna talk about today, which specifically is how to use Cloud Custodian to implement and optimize your FinOps practices. So we're going to look at a um, little review of the definition of FinOps, though if you've been here all day, you know a lot of, about it by now, and the state of the FinOps challenges, probably repeating a little bit of information from earlier. Um, governance as a FinOps capability. And then we're going to look at some example policies for cost management and optimization and how this all can drive behavior change. So um, <clears throat> we already had a great intro to FinOps from our last few speakers, but a quick reminder here is really that it is a combination of systems, best practices, and culture in order to increase business value, bring together technology, business, and finance at your company. According to the State of FinOps 2022 survey, the biggest pain point for adoption and enforcement of FinOps practices is getting engineers to take action on cost optimization. A few of the other major obstacles are the need for automation, the need to reduce waste or unused resources, and the ability to maintain a full allocation of cl uh, cloud spending and accounting for additional costs. Um, there's a lot of that in there. <clears throat> so the um, capabilities of FinOps are the actual ways we meet the demands of FinOps practice. So we're looking at cloud policy and government today and governance today. And uh, we're going to talk about how automated governance can help uh, you implement your FinOps practices. I have a few examples here from our upcoming comic uh, based on uh, some capability FinOps for Cloud Custodian. Okay, so this is what um, we're really here for, a look at some sample policies and just a few of the ways that Cloud Custodian can address some key problems and automate these actions for you in order to help with your own adoption of the FinOps framework. So first, a great way to get started with improving your FinOps practices is to use Cloud Custodian to look for unused resources in your environment a policy like this example right here can help you deregister unused Amazon machine images older than 90 days. A similar policy could help you delete old and stale EC2 or RDS instances or Redshift snapshots. The financial results here are going to vary based on the number of resources you're using and how you use them. But this is a pretty quick check that development teams can do in order to begin a behavior change toward FinOps standards. And this is probably one of the easiest ways to get started and quickly cut some costs. Our comic alludes to zombies. I know Lindbergh just talked a little bit about zombie resources. You're gonna find some, a fun zombie fight in our, in our next comic. Um, another policy that can help with your FinOps practices is um, looking at underutilized resources. This is an example policy of deprovisioning underutilized resources. Uh, developers can use this policy to quickly identify over provisioned resources and help you right size. The unused and underutilized resources policies are pretty simple policies, but you can define actions from them and therefore drive behavior change among your developers. You can use these policies to notify developers of the problems by embedding it in their own workflows, educating them on what the problem is, and then automating the enforcement actions, which kind of addresses a lot of that uh, governance capability that we talked about a couple minutes ago. Another way to use Custodian to cut out <clears throat> some of your cloud spending is by setting appropriate data retention policies on cyclical resources to meet your company requirements. For example, you could use a policy that changes backups from 180 days down to 90 days, save a lot of storage there, get some money back. Um, our comic here has uh, a pretty extreme example of a five-year backup but um, that's something that you could use Cloud Custodian to identify and hopefully have your de developers want to fix and increase uh, you know, a reason for them to, try, uh, to change their behavior. 
Another example of uh, a way that you can uh, start to address your FinOps practices and um, improve cost optimization is uh, with an off hours policy. So this example uh, sets downtime to begin at 10 p.m. daily and start up again at 10 a.m. So you get uh, 12 hours each night that you're not really spending. Uh, you can find a lot more examples in expansion upon off hours policies um, on, upon offer support and configuration in the Cloud Custodian docs. This particular policy, I think, was lifted directly from there. So the real benefit of using Cloud Custodian in your FinOps practice is that you can automate policies, get developers to take action, and drive behavior change. It puts a lot of these practices right into the hands of developers, helps to create a culture of accountability and even excitement around cost management practices when using a tool like this. So not only is it valuable in identifying problems, but it also helps to drive developer behavior in taking action on them as well. So that's all I have for today. Thank you. Um, look out for a Cloud Custodian for FinOps tutorial coming from me very soon with a little bit of exp expansion on these policies. I'm currently studying to be a FinOps certified practitioner, and I think I'm probably ready to take the test, but I'm a little scared. So if anybody has any tips, let me know. You can reach out to me on Twitter or email and LinkedIn. Um, and yeah, let me know if there are any questions I can try to answer right now. We do have a question. Uh, does custodian support native JIRA integration, or is this something that you implemented within your org? I think that's something that users, um, we've seen users implement that workflow using custodian, but I don't think it's naturally in there. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I think there was a question on how can I learn more about AWS calls these policies make? I'm not sure if that's related really to this. I see it in the state chat. Yeah, I'm not too sure how to answer that. I do see a comment that it's pretty easy to read even for non-Python folks, and that's absolutely true in that is also a reason why it can kind of, um, it makes it easy for developers to take accountability and like want to um, change their behavior and want to work with FinOps. It, uh, you know, the simple YAML files, the pretty simple policies um, can help a lot with that. It's not like a hugely difficult task to take on. You're not writing tons of, um, you know, outside scripts. Yeah, we got a few links there in chat for you, uh, linking to the, the parts of the Python code that are doing that, calling Bodo3. Um, a Bill would like to add, you can integrate Jira using C7 and Mailer, sending an email to Jira, uh, but you'll need some Jira development, and I'll go ahead and get a link for that. And thanks, Mike, for saying good luck on the test. I'm going to try to take it this week and hopefully come back with the certification by the time we get to KubeCon. Ooh. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm giving myself a deadline. And uh, Raghav is asking, uh, how do we decide when to use hard policies versus soft policies, especially in an organization with multiple stakeholders? Great question. I'm not really sure how to answer that one. Um, yeah. I feel Let's like chat has to say on that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, Excellent. I know I was well, a little bit under time.